Looking for a great craft project to do with all of these plastic grocery bags? Watch today's video and I'll give you the perfect idea. If you're new to DIY on the house, you need to check out our rug weaving videos. We have all sorts of ideas for looms. We have peg looms, pin looms, rug looms. We have ways you can uh, weave rugs and pillows and dishcloths. But today I am going to take plastic bags and we're going to weave a rug. I have had numerous people ask me about doing this, so I am going to be 100% honest with you. This is the second time I started this video because the first time was an epic fail. I thought I had the perfect solution on how to cut these bags so that we could make it fast and efficient and it was a mess. So I am going to save you the pain of making a mess and I'm going to show you a way that will work that you can use a rug loom to weave a camping mat, a rug. I've had a lot of people uh, say that they would love to have a way to use these to make mats to give to people who might be in shelters. So I am going to give you step by step on how to take the grocery bags and weave them into a mat. The loom I'm going to use for the mat is 24 inches wide by 41 inches long. You can make a loom whatever size you want. We have the video on how to make this loom in a link down below. I also have a video on Ross making a loom using a piece of artwork from the thrift store. So if you can find the right dimensions of a piece of artwork, super easy way to make a loom. To weave the mat, you have two directions of uh, fabric. We have the warp going from end to end around the nails, and then we have the weaving. So the warp, I am going to use fabric. For the weaving, I am going to use grocery bags. To calculate how much warp you need, take your number of nails, take that times two, and then take that number times the length of your loom. So on this one, I have 44 nails. I'm gonna take that times two, which is 88, and I'm gonna take that times 41 inches, and I'm coming up with 100 yards of warping strips that are joined end to end. So I'm gonna show you how to make the warping strips next. The reason I'm using fabric for the warp is because my mat is only 41 inches long, I'm going to make two mats and join them together. I'm going to join them together at the warp. So I wanted it to be sturdier than the plastic bag that we might have the tendency to rip. So this uh, warping is going to be one and a half inches wide each strip is so you can just eyeball it you don't have to be really precise just make a, a snip in the end and rip it and then we'll join these end for end which I'll show you or if you have a rotary cutter and a quilting a ruler uh, you can just zip it don't uh, worry about too much precision just to add an inch and a half mark Just cut the, the strip inch and a half. If it's wider or narrow at some points, no worries. So we need to prepare about 100 yards for my loom, for my project. This is a bag of strips that I had left over from a rug uh, that I actually have a video uh, on the channel for on how I made a rug out of the piece of artwork frame. I'm going to go ahead and just use the same color palette. The warp isn't going to show very much. To join your strips end for end on the fabric, take your uh, ends of your fabric, lay them in the same direction, fold them over, I don't know, generous half inch, and put a snip at the bend. Now lay them end for end. Put your finger through the hole and take your tail and pull it through. Now your fabric is joined um, 
and you can make a continuous string of this and roll it in a ball. So I like to join it as I go. I'm going to make one big ball. You'll want to have your warping continuously joined because when you'll see me uh, warp the rug here, you, um, it's much easier than stopping and starting. So here we are to another one and you join the color in the same manner and continue rolling your ball. So we're just going to start by putting a knot in this end. So leave yourself a little bit of a tail and uh, just tie a knot. So now we have a loop that we are going to put over your first nail. And then just go back and forth on your nails, pulling it pretty tight, nothing crazy, but pull it nice and tight. When you get down to your last nail, just as you started with a loop on your first nail, on your last nail, just wrap it around and estimate where a knot needs to go. Tie a knot and leave yourself a good three or four inch tail. The very first challenge that we're going to have is how many bags do you need? So if you want to uh, put your guess down below in the comments, I would be really curious. Be honest. Don't watch to the end of the video when I reveal how many I used. Comment down below and guess how many it's going to take because I truly don't know the answer. My first fail was not enough to give me an idea. So what we have here are uh, grocery bags and I have put them in stacks of 10. So this is what 50 bags look like. So I'm gonna start with 50 and I have put a staple up in the corner so that we can try to keep these somewhat straight. I'm going to take a ruler and a rotary cutter and cut off the end that has the handles. Then I am going to cut the strips in two inch strips all the way down. This doesn't have to be precise, so if you don't have a rotary cutter or a ruler, scissors will work just fine. But this does make it a very fast process. Okay, I'm down here to the end, and this might be a little shy. Oh no, it's still two inches. If it was a little shy of two inches, definitely go ahead and still use it. So it can be roughly anywhere between an inch and a half and two inches. Okay, now that we have a pile of plastic rings, plastic loops, we need to join them together. And plastic, you don't wanna pull it too tight. It will rip. Um, and uh, you also will find that it grips to each other. So when you are joining to, let's uh, use this middle one as an example, We'll uh, feed the new one inside the loop, get it almost close down to where you want. Slide this one to get the slack out of it before you pull it tight. Otherwise, you're going to get left with this one being uneven. Now that you have your loom warped, you can go ahead and put in your metal rods on the edges. If you don't have a loom with metal rods, it really is hard um, to keep your edges straight and your corners squared because the rods are going to be wrapped around. Every row, we're going to go around the rod and that will keep it um, nice and even. So for the first row, it is really important to understand and I wish I could come up with really good terminology. These are your warp. Underneath the nail of, the, um, of your warp string, that's where you want your first row to go. So every one of these gaps that go underneath this nail, we need to put your, your strip of plastic bag in that gap. So I have my bag and I'm going to go from the back side and go into that first gap and just go about halfway on my strip. So now we have 
one part of it is going around the back of the rod. We're going to bring that side and where this one came out, this one goes in. We're gonna to go to the next gap and while my fingers are in the back, I just push forward through that gap, the strand. And now we have this one and it goes back through that where that one came forward, this one goes back. My fingers were in the back and it came, I, I pushed it up the front. And now you just continue that, making sure that your first row here goes in that gap all the way across. And what this is doing, if you just went in between the, um, the warping, not underneath the nail, your weaving would slide right off. This is um, going to create a stop. That loop there is going to create a stop for your weaving not to slide off. Okay, I've went a little distance. As you go, you're gonna want to slide your plastic up to the top. When you get down to the end, we need to again go around the rod. So I'm going to make sure that everything is pushed up to the top. And we have one more loop here, this loop here. We need to go in the center of that. That's the loop that you made to tie your warp on there. So make sure you go inside that loop so that you're still just actually going as if you're still continuing to weave. So that one came forward. This one goes to the back and where you were normally pushing your finger up to the next hole, now you're just going to push it to go around the rod. So at this point, you're exactly the same. You have one coming out of the front of that loop and one going around the back. Now they just trade places. What goes on the front needs to come around and come back out the front. What's on the back needs to go around and go to the back and come up your next hole. Now you're set to go across. One thing that um, it might not be as evident on plastic because these are kind of thin strips but um, if it, it probably will still show up, but if you're using fabric on any of your projects ever, watch how when I'm weaving, the lead hand is going up to make room for the next one to go under it. So it'll make a diagonal pattern on your weaving. So this one is up out of the way, the bottom one goes down. Now it goes up out of the way, this, I'm doing it very exaggerating um, my motion right now. But once this comes through, it goes up out of the way. So that one's up. But once you get going, you can see that that's how the natural rhythm will make a really cool little uh, diagonal pattern. So, so far at this point, I really am enjoying the plastic because you don't have these strings. What I'm not enjoying is this double loop. Um, I'm finding my fingers are going to have to get used to having the double loop. My first fail um, that I, um, I took for the team, it didn't work out. It didn't have this double loop, so I was cruising. It just looked ugly. Um, this is actually turning out pretty cool. So, so far, I think we, we have a winner here. So I'm gonna go to the end of my 50 uh, bags and I am going to show you where I am at at 50 and we'll see how many bags it's gonna take. But if you have any questions while you're doing yours, please, please comment down below. Um, I love these projects. I love learning from you. Um, but uh, I'll be back after my 50 are gone. I am really close to having 50 bags on this rug. And so I wanted to stop and update you on some things that I have learned. First of all, I did not anticipate being able to see a pattern um, in this 
with a different kind of printing on the uh, plastic bags, it is showing up and making a really cool pattern. So um, I've been finding myself mapping out a little bit more to be able to have the colors go throughout the rug. So uh, think ahead if you're wanting to have a pattern, think ahead to what bags you're going to be using. The other thing is I had said to join several of these together um, and then start weaving, ixnay that. So I just join them one at a time and that allows you to get the slack out of your um, plastic and it, it is really fast. So cut them ahead of time. I have mine in bundles of 10 so I know how many uh, bags I've used but um, attach them one at a time. Other than that, um, the only other thing I learned was uh, 10 bags goes about four inches on a rug that is two feet wide. I do have to confess, this loom was one of the first ones we made and it only has finishing nails to hold my rods. It doesn't have the eyelets um, that are on the loom uh, video that Ross made for me. So I was weaving for a few rows and my rod had popped off the nail. So I'm going to be curious to see if we'll be able to see that or not. But uh, in the meantime, I am loving, loving working with this plastic. There's no fraying um, and it's super quick. So just keep your motion of putting your lead hand to the sky and it really is turning out to be super cool. I am to the last row and to this point I am estimating that I've used about 125 bags. What has happened is I didn't realize that I could kind of create a rhythm of colors. So some that I cut I didn't use. Uh, some were weak and had ripped. But we're getting ready to do the last row. Just as important as the first row is the last row. Otherwise, all of your weaving will slide right off of your warp if we don't do this next step. So I have come to the end and I am going to now bring these um, weaving underneath each nail. So you're going to need to have a crochet hook. So I'm going to put this crochet hook through the warp and the one that is supposed to come around, the weaving that's supposed to come around, I'm going to still bring that around, but I'm going to pull it through that warp. This one is supposed to come around and come to the front. I'm going to put my crochet hook in the same hole and pull it through that warp. Put the crochet hook in the next one, draw back, in the same hole, bring the one from the back forward. When you get to the, the last one, make sure you go through this last warp as well. I have accidentally skipped that one and just went around the rod um, and I was able to adjust it later but you don't want to have to do that. So go through your last warp with both pieces. So now you have the one on the front and the back and now I am going to go back around the rod and into that first and second warp one more time. It's sort of like back stitching uh, in sewing. So I'm going to do that one in there and bring it back up. Bring this one to the back and up into that front warp. There we go. And almost done. The plastic is so easy to tie. Um, so I'm going to tie a knot here. So then I'm just going to snip these a few inches long take your hook and just feed them down into some of the stitching. Okay, we are ready to take it off of the loom.
I like the decision or the choice to do fabric for the warp as much as the plastic does um, get a little tiny hole and become weak. I think that this warp would have got pretty weak pulling them off of the nails like this so the fabric held up pretty good. Okay, now we'll take off this end. And just as in a fabric rug, this little edge here, super easy to solve that. You just use your fingers and pull up your weaving to the end. I am just totally floored. I really did not expect this to look this silly cute. I, I just love the way it uh, turned out. There are a couple places where I need to feed in some plastic um, loops to make sure that those are nice and tight. Depends on your application. If this is slippery on the floor that you're gonna be using it for, you can put the foam backing on the back of it um, and I would just slip stitch it. Um, but there's so many uses to this, you might not need to do that. So here you are. There is the finished rug made out of about 125 plastic bags uh, out of fabric warp, but I am shocked. So I hope you uh, have fun with your project. If you have any suggestions or questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching DIY on the house.